Uh, hi, I'm Jeremy, and I'm here with winemaker Jake Hawks. Hi. And today we are going to uh, be running around showing you the process of grafting. And I know this is going to be a little bit complicated, so as we go through, you're probably going to be confused from time to time. And for that reason, we've put a place where you're going to be able to write in and ask us questions about this. So please do that. First thing we're going to do is jump in the truck and head over to Dry Creek to Chris Lindelof and Gray Creek Viticultural Services where we're going to uh, pick up the budwood or the grafting material and we'll explain as we go. Got the doors for you, eh? <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, here we are at Great Creek with Chris Linnelhoff. Um, if, it, if it looks cold in here, it's because it is. It's about 34 degrees, and uh, this is Chris's refrigerated storage for budwood. Um, about how many it. acres a year get budded over as, the, as a result of the wood that you sell? Oh, uh, that'd, be, that'd, be, that'd, be, that'd be tough for me to come up with. I, I could figure that what, out. 50 but or 1,000? I would bet. That was probably more than that. Probably more than 1,000. Yeah. Wow. The same way there are trends in wine, there have got to be trends in the grapes that produce those wines, right? Right. So what's the hot variety? Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. We're going to be talking about grafting. What we're going to do is we're going to go from here out into a vineyard and actually show how tea budding works. But I was thinking that maybe you could just kind of explain why people graft. There's a couple of different reasons that people graft. One of the most common, of course, is that someone plants a rootstock in the ground and they, they want to put the variety on top. So that's the easy part. You can put Cabernet, you can put Chardonnay, you can put Pinot Noir, anything you want, you can graft it to that rootstock. Um, but, what is it, but what does it mean to graft it to the rootstock? I mean, what do you do? You actually take a little bud off of a stick and slip it right into the, into the cutting. This is a bundle of 500 buds, which could potentially be 500 vines right. in the vineyard. Wow. So Isn't you can, see where, yes, you can see where one bundle can turn into a lot of vines real yeah. quick. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, Chris. No Don't take up any more. Piece of cake. Thanks, Thanks a lot. A lot. Thanks. Thanks, Cheryl. So, when my parents bought this place in 1973, um, it was a prune orchard like most of Alexander Valley was then. And they tore out the prunes and planted it all in Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. And until last year, that, that was the only thing we ever had grown here, was Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. And then last year, um, I bought some budwood from Chris, and we budded some vines over. We, we, we grafted some vines over to Cabernet Franc and to Malbec and to Petit Verdot. And this year, we're going to bud over a little bit more to Cabernet Franc. And you're going to meet my dad. He's out here working with a crew. Um, and we're going to just take you through the grafting process. This is a cane that was cut from a, a, a Cabernet uh, Franc vine last year, last winter during pruning season when it was dormant. And, and we put it in uh, damp sawdust in a plastic bag in the refrigerator. And it's July now. And as you can see, it's still green. So uh, that's the way you keep it alive. And there's the bud there. It has the scar underneath it. Um, and then you make another cut like that, and you end up with a, with a bud with a flat back that's thin, that, that'll slip in easily into a small incision. And you, you have to keep them wet. This process is an is a, is a idea that comes from Mexico, according to my understanding. It involves waiting until the bark gets juicy enough to, to separate from the trunk. Make a T-shaped cut. What that does is to expose the cambium layer, which is the actively growing part of the wood. These buds are cut from sticks from last year. You put them into the cut and push them down in. One on each side. Uh, the tape's really sort of the secret of the whole thing. It squeezes the parts that are going to grow together together. It's elastic and uh, it prevents the graft union from drying out. Use a lot of tape and 
cover anything that might dry out as completely as you can. So you can see here that this is exactly what we're doing, right? And put the bud down in and tied it up last year. And you can see it's just incredible how the vine has already just grown out the side of it. All this growth here is all stuff that happened in the last year. You made all this and then put all those grapes on in, in, in one year. Thanks for watching. Check back because we'll uh, be doing this periodically when interesting things arise. Um, and shoot us an email if you have any questions at info at hawkswine.com. Thanks a lot. Bye.